holy one. You are the holy one. You are the righteous one. We are grateful, O oh God, for the things you do for us. We thank you, O oh God. We honor you this afternoon. Thank you, Almighty God, for all that you are to us. We're grateful, O oh God, for this season and this time. We thank you for the things that you do for us that money cannot buy. We are grateful, Lord God Almighty, for in the midst of this altercation and in the midst of this confusion in the world, you are establishing your name. You are establishing your strength. And Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful, O oh God, for the many things that you are to us in this season and in this time. Lord, we thank you because you have not become a confusion to us. Jeremiah said, oh Lord, do not be a terror to me. Then he got to a point, he said, you have deceived me and I am deceived. Father, we thank you, oh God, that you have not shut us in. You've not shut us in to our reprobate mind. We can still hear you even when what we are hearing from you is not palatable, we can still hear you. There is a generation that is coming very swiftly on the wing of the wings. The mouth of God is so strange to their ears. The days will come, they will close their ears and say they will not want to hear God anymore. And in those seasons and in those days, there will be a dark age upon the face of the earth. But on the remnant of God will shine forth light. And to them will be given the ears of heaven. And the attention of heaven will be theirs. Their dimension will not be of the world. Neither will any of them be of the celebrity status. Brethren, the spirit of prophecy is upon me this afternoon. And I'm telling you, yesterday ended last night. In the midst of the prayer, the spirit of prophecy came so strongly upon me. And I can see so far into the confusion of the age to come. But a remnant will exist and will be kept by the power of God. A remnant will be kept by the strength of the Almighty that their ears will be open to the court of heaven and their ears will pick the slightest whisper in the spirit. And Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this word of affirmation this afternoon. We are grateful in the name of the Lord for what you are doing in this time and in this season. I see an ascension and I begin to look back and all of a sudden, he's looking like Balaam. But no, he's not Balaam. I'm beginning to see ascension. Ascension of the remnants. That the stronghold of Balaam and the doctrine of Nicolaitan will be broken completely. It was said in the Revelation Gospel that those that follow the Doctrines of Balaam and Nicolaitans are highlighted in the spirit. And once again, my eyes are open in the spirit and they are highlighted once again. Soon time will be no more. And all the remnants will arise in faith and in strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Swiftly coming is the age of the season. The season of the righteous. The season of the remnants. The time in which the remnant will ascend in all their full strength and begin to take their place. The darkness will be so thick that it will be described by the light of this remnant. 
Wherever they stand will be description of full light. Guard your heart and be strong. For the season is coming upon you and upon me, in which the podium will collapse. And the platform that will exist will be the platform of the star of Bethlehem. On that platform, you and I will stand and we will show to the dying world the full power of Christ once again. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, O oh God. I can see the full regalia in, of heaven. I can see the whole dimension that heaven has kept for the fathers, kept it from the fathers, kept it from suckling babes, but they are being released to the remnant. Today is like no other day, and today is the appointment that destiny has kept with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There is someone here, you've never been for this meeting. As a matter of fact, you never planned to be in this meeting. Where are you? If you are not here, I will move on. There is one person, never been to this meeting. Just raise your hand, please, if you're the one. The Lord says, I shall tell you wherever you are, that destiny call just begun. The pattern of your life to this point is about to open. And this meeting, this singular meeting, is the beginning of your destiny with Jesus himself. All along, everything you might have known, might have been through some forerunner or through some go-between. From this day and from this season, your eyes are open, your ears are open, your heart becomes an understanding heart. And from the stable of your own stand, God will begin to speak in plain terms to you and you will begin to accept. Your muscle will begin to be developed in the spirit and the thing that cause for struggle to you, you will rise above them because you are called. You are called. You are called. All the confusion he either to are gone. The donkey that is lost is found. The ass that is lost is found. The kit that is being looked for is found. You are the one that everyone is looking for. That is the reason why those things are coming in, 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 in parable. They will be clear a minute, they will not be clear another minute. It's because God is calling your attention. Behold the attention that was called in the season of Moses, when he saw the bush burning and the fire could not consumed the bush. And he said, what is this? And as he turned back, oh, Almighty came out of the fire and began to explain what is about to happen in the life of Moses. I declare to you that your next 40 years of your journey is being described by this singular meeting. Yesterday ended last night. God is calling and you have answered. Thank you, Jesus. This is a season when people will have their calling without going to seminary. Get this straight and listen properly, people, wherever you are all over the world. I welcome you to the age of prophecy, not prophetic prophecy. This is the age where the spirit of Jesus will take over men and women. The age, not the age where you will listen to prophecy. Those are the prophetic season. I am introducing you to the age of prophecy, that he himself is the prophecy. He will come and begin to open himself. He will not talk about any other person. He will begin to open himself to you. Why? Because the season of dryness is coming to the world where they will not even find anywhere to hear the word of the Lord. But now it's coming to you. It's coming to you, Remember. People will seek God and they will not find him. But to you, 
the light is shining. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Eyes are so open this afternoon to see Jesus. I believe strongly that you will see Jesus and every confusion will be gone in your life. And the things that distract you and the things that take your attention, oh, will be arrested. In the season where the undertaker who is about to take over, he himself will be taking over. This is the season where we are. The season for the remnant. The season where the remnant will begin to find Christ for themselves. Look no further. He has found you. He has found you. In the name of Jesus Christ. What a season we are in. What a season and what a time we are in. This is a very, very important time in heaven. Very delicate season in God. And I want us for the next 15 minutes to pray in the spirit. That the spirit of prayer of Jesus will come upon us. The season of the prayer of Jesus will come upon us all over the world. When I mean us, I mean remnants, all right? Will come upon all the remnants, will come upon all the saints of God that we will enter into the prayer room of heaven, not the prayer room of the world as we know it, not the season of asking for uh, things that perish. No, this is the season of asking for eternal life. This is the season of laying hold on eternal life. This is the season of holding on to the righteousness of God. This is not the season of claiming to be righteous. This is the season that even the very elect shall be cut off with a very sharp edge of the sword. And God Almighty will not say anything. Let's begin to push in various capacities, wherever you are. Shut down everything that is around you right now and concentrate. This moment is not just a moment just to waste. He himself is wherever you are. It's a strange moment. It's a strange moment. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to push. Begin to pray for the saint. Saint, saint all over the world. Begin to pray. Lord, begin to play as we pray. Father, we thank you. Brundo scote che mi ha lasciato randa posso chi raccassata
He began to pray all over the world. Wherever everyone is, he began to push. He began to push for light of God Himself to find us. No one else to find us except the true light. Christ Himself will be our light. Because the days of darkness are coming. every one of you into the, the fire of the power of the Holy Ghost. In this moment you will pray from the mouth of Jesus. every strength that you have people come on push begin to push begin to push to sit on the season for the things that perish this is not the time for the things that perish. Eternity. Eternity. Come. Eternity. Come. Eternity. Come. Friends for today, 
smile all the way and all that I'll need for tomorrow. My Lord knows the way to the will of God. All I have to do is to Come on, push, come on, push, come on, push. Is someone right now experiencing an intensity like before? Massive intensity. This kind of intensity you used to really, really pray before you enter it. But right now, without mm -hmm. even spending too much time, you are you are that intensity, and it is very heavy upon you. Where are you? There is a word for you. God says, I shall tell you by the word of a living God that a serious collusion is coming to test your faith, your friends, your people, they will collude together to bring you down. But the power that is coming upon you today is like that of something that will make you rise above every temptation and every collusion of men. Like Daniel, the sent to you will never find you. This is the word of the Lord. I am not praying. I'm telling you what the word of the Lord is saying. Those that are coming for you, their feet, I am hearing in my ears. But right before they get to your doorstep, they will turn against themselves and they will heat themselves up. They will fight themselves. They will never be able to rise above you. It will be said of you that as for this person, we do not know what has become of him. Just like it was said of Moses yesterday and then last night. Strength for today is mine all the way. And all that I'll need for tomorrow, my Lord, the way to the wilderness, and all I have to do for tomorrow. If there is someone here, you have a child, the child is very problematic. The child is giving you serious headache. Where are you? I have a word of the Lord for you. You cannot understand the child. If you are not here, I won't say anything. And for today, it's mine all the way, and all that I'll need for tomorrow. My Lord knows the way to the wilderness. All I have to do is to fall. My Lord knows the way to the world. All I have 
have to do is to follow the wind to the wind. When I have to do is to follow rain for today. Is mine all the way, and all that I lead for tomorrow. Lord, to the windows, and all I have to do is. This is the reason I've since last year. 2023 is the season of election for the remnant. And everything that is beginning to happen from now is in preparation to 2023. Lift up your eyes by 2030. A revival that the world cannot deny will hit every nook and crannies of the world. And the season of preparation is here. There is vacation on virtually all the mountains of human endeavor this season. The vacation is for the remnants. The Estas will begin to take their place. The Mordecais will begin to take their place. The Nehemiahs will begin to take their place. The Daniels will begin to take their place. And the Joseph will begin to take their place. Watch out. I said it last year, and I'm saying it again. The season of Godfatherism in this country is over. God is taking over the stage by himself, by his power, in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. I'm grateful to God for this season and this time. I only hope I can preach. I only hope I can say anything because the season of the prophecy has started. This season was a major season that the fathers missed. I hope everyone is hearing me. I hope and I pray that my network will be stronger than it is so that you can all capture what I am saying today. This is not a day where we, will, we should miss any statement. Every word that, will, that is coming from the mouth of Jesus through me today. I have, it's been a long time since I've seen this kind of words coming to me. The season of the prophecy was missed by the fathers. Yes, the same fathers that are leaving the scene right now. They only caught the prophetic. Few of them entered into the season of prophecy. This was the single responsible factor while the culture of apostolic Christian living declined. Moses was shown the way of the Lord but the people of Israel were shown the acts of the Lord. You can enter into the act of the Lord and still miss it. But you cannot enter into the way of the Lord and miss it. Very few of these fathers were given the opportunity by the mercies of God to enter into the way of the Lord. Quite a lot of them met the sensation that comes with the way of the Lord. Recall that 
only Paul heard the voice. Others only saw the light. Recall, only Jesus heard the voice. Peter, James, and John saw the light. Recall that when the season came very strongly in the days of Moses, even Joshua did not get the dimension that Moses had. The children of Israel were well within the act. They could describe the act to the next generation, but they couldn't describe the way. This was the major, singular, responsible fact why there was decline in the culture of apostolic Christian leaders. So the By your mercy, we are from We've come by your mercy. By your mercy, we are come. Come beyond the shore. We press into our God, and all He has in store. More, 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 more. Beyond the shores, we press into our God, and all He has in store. More, 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 more. Beyond the shores. We press into our God, and all He has in store. More, 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 more. Beyond the shore, we press into our God, and all He has in store. We press in for His voice. We press in for mercy. I do bear your We press in for mercy. We press in for grace. For all you have in store, we press in for mercy. We press.
Pressing for your voice. We press into our heart. And all we have is yours. We press into our heart. We press into you. We press in to see. We press into you about and all you have in store. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for reminding me what to do. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I believe in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. This meeting, whenever you are coming for this meeting, always come prepared to meet Jesus. Shut me down now, saying that some people's heart are not still open to it. These are not the season where words just come out. These are very sacred and delicate words. It's better you don't hear than for you to hear. And it does not make any meaning to you. May you enter into the season where the word of the Lord will be the only meaning in your life and will begin to give you meaning. Brethren, this meeting is of God, is for God, is by God. So everyone coming for the meeting must be of God. Before he shut me down, I was talking about the difference between the way of God and the acts of God. That a people can enter into the act of God and they may not see the way of God. And I stated clearly that you may enter into the act of God the season of the act of God may be open to you and you still miss his way. The act of God is the season of the miraculous. The act of God is the season of, of everything that you want to know about God. About God. The, the season of the act of God is when you even see industries springing by the word of the Lord. When you see things happening by the word of Jehovah when you see wonderful things happening all of a sudden and you know that this is no other than the hand of God, it may still be the act of God. But when you enter into the way of the Lord, it is you and God. You are shut in. It is God and you. You begin to journey not by what men say, not by what your pastor say, not by what any of your friends say. This is the season where friends will deny friends. This is the season where men of God will be betrayed by the people of God. This is the season where the people of God will be betrayed by the men of God. This is the season that David entered into when he began to say, oh, I thought it was an enemy that was doing this. I did not know that it was you, my fellow brother. This is the season where God will begin to, to make himself known to you one-on-one -on -one and everything around you will begin to turn against what you know. The season where you will suddenly think you are the only one standing. See what was said. To Moses. As for this Moses, we do not know what has become of him. Why is it that everyone was saying the same thing and it was only Moses that they were complaining against? 
Was Aaron not there? This is the season where you will miss it if you look at anybody. This is the season where you will miss it if you look at your pastor. This is the season that God by his mercy has opened the season of prophecy on this particular generation. That this generation will now begin to see the culture of God. That this generation will now begin to see the way of God. The way of God can be open to a generation and few, few in the generation may have access to it. The fact that it's open to the whole generation does not mean that the whole generation will come into the season. Jesus said, strive that you may enter. People of God, this is the season with a heavy heart. This is the season where you will see the highest betrayal like no other. This is the season where the devil will suddenly go a wall and leave the butchering and the killing and the maiming to the people of God to destroy themselves. Rise and rise above all these things, people. And the only thing that will make you rise above all these things will be for you to come to the corner of God, for the way of the Lord to be open to you by the mercies of God. Part of the characteristics of the season of the prophecy is it will not be according to what is being said to you. It will be who is saying to you. This is not the season of thus say the Lord. This is the season of the Lord himself. The Lord himself will come in prophecy to you and unveil himself to you in your bedroom, in your heart, in your house. Without you listening to any tape, without you listening to any minister of God, God himself will begin to come to you. This is the season. He has made up his mind. And you are one of, the, one of those that he will reveal himself to. He said, those that do not ask of me, I am coming to meet them. This is the season. When I see heaven open, and our fathers are saying, we've done the best we could, and we are well on our way. And God is saying, well done, great and faithful servant. I'm seeing tears in their eyes. And they are saying, oh, we could be given more time to, to break down all these doctrines that we have erected for ourselves. But God is saying, no, there is no more time. Because their being here is delaying the next revival. Listen to me. The era must be closed. A season must be opened, and the season has opened. Someone said to me, he said, oh, why is it that God is speaking in this month, that this is the season of mercy? I said, oh, I heard that in the month of May. If you ask Tolu by the mercies of God, she will show to you all the messages that we discussed in the month of May were centered around mercy, if you remember very well. And the season in which we are is the season of prayer. Why? Because God, God will do nothing except the people pray. Prayer is the hand of the communication of God to show his way. This generation is in the heart of God because of the remnant that are in it. Because it is the remnant that will expose the darkness in this generation. There are very few and strength will be given to them. In the season of the prophecy, the way of the father is known. The remnant enter into the full stature of God, not a partial stature. The remnant rise beyond their weaknesses. The remnant 
will be tired of explaining their weaknesses away before God. The remnant will now be given strength to see the miracle in the miraculous. The season of prophecy goes beyond the prophetic. It goes beyond miraculous. It sees the miracle himself. Who is the miracle? Christ. He sees Christ. Christ is revealed to everyone. So that the miraculous will look like what it truly is, the children's bread. I was telling Tolu in a chat, I said, the power of, of, of healing is so strong around me lately and the working of miracle is so strong and Jesus was saying to me that, that is one of the signs of the season of the prophecy. Miracles will begin to happen through common men. Hallelujah. Men will begin to give their life to Christ without anybody preaching to them. Oh, thank God for one of us. The father was very sick. And when they told me, I looked into the spirit and I said, ah, ah, this man is going to die. But I said very quickly before he dies, let us pray for the salvation of his soul. And Tolu did all she could. Let us pray for the salvation of his soul. I said, I see that this man is a very difficult man. Let us begin to pray for the salvation of his soul. Oh, and it happened. The sickness became so strong. Even the doctor that was taking care of the man died. The hospital gave up. Things became very, very tough. Hey. And in the midst of the prayer, one day the Lord told me to ascend up to heaven. And as he summoned me to heaven, he told me, go and tell that woman or that lady that it is over. And right there, I sent a chart. I said, it is over. And in that season, the power of God came. Oh, Lord. Lord, and from that season, nobody knew what happened to the man. According to the daughter, he, she said the man just started responding to treatment, woke up, started eating, no treatment, nothing. He started eating, and when he came back to life, he said, I saw a big light that came upon the roof of our house. Can everybody hear me? He said, and the light came upon the roof of our house. And he spilled over into the into the roof upon the roof of our neighbor. And this light, ladies and gentlemen, from that day. Can you all hear me now? I was describing the miracle that happened without anybody praying for the man that was sick. Did you hear that? And I believe you. Yes, we did. And I believe you heard the point where I said the light came upon his roof. Did you hear that as well? Yes. Okay, so I want to be sure where I am. 
I'm saying this season is the season of prophecy. I know that I should be talking about the true heart of a remnant, but I permit when the spirit of God himself come into a meeting. You should begin to have that regard to excuse him, to excuse his lack of courtesy, if I may put it that way, that he may not be the way you want it. Oh, the season is upon you. This is how you will know a meeting that is not ordinary. You see, don't be too familiar with God. You might have gone into so many meetings. I do not care. This meeting is a holy ground. Someone said before this meeting started, DD on a Wednesday, it is very strange. When I read it, I laughed because God is coming in a way that is not familiar. And I have vowed with all my heart to follow him anytime, any day. It was another miracle that was recorded. As I was coming from my home, for those of you that are familiar with that language, the Lord began to say to me concerning one of us, he said it in Yoruba that go and tell her that I have paid it all and I paid it in full. I said, yes, sir. And I sent the word to her and she said, oh, I broke down. I broke down. And everyone around me was wondering what was happening to me. And it just was just because I was, I, 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 I was hoeing someone and it was so bad. And I said, well, I do not know that you were hoeing someone, but this was the word that I heard from the Lord. And not so long from when I said that word, the person that this woman hold sent a message to her that he has canceled the debt, all of the debt, that he want them to start afresh. And not only that, people around her started responding to her to say, in fact, she said the husband just said, what is wrong with you? You are the one that we all lean on in this house. You are our mother. Everybody goes to you if they need something. And why is it that you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are down? And she was just mumbling once, mumbling once, and she did not want to say it out. And the husband said, come on, let it out. And she said everything. And the husband said, go on and calculate all the things that you need. Come, and I will, I will take care of it. Now, this was the debt that the person had canceled, yet the husband was saying, go, go and bring the debt. I will pay. Hallelujah. A season of prophecy is here. This is the season where promises will no more be promises. As is coming from the mouth of the Lord before you finish hearing it, it's coming to pass. Following day, she chatted me and she said, I'm supposed to be happy, but I'm not sad either, but I don't know what is wrong with me. I just feel like God has broken me. I say, yes, if God comes to you and you still have words to describe, that is not miracle, that is miraculous. But if God comes to you and he comes in so strong upon you and you lack words to describe, ladies and gentlemen, that is miracle. You just met miracle. That is, it is a different thing when you receive mercy. It is another different ball game entirely when mercy himself reveals himself to you. Last year, we were in a meeting. Tolu will remember this meeting very well. We were in a meeting and I turned to two ladies, very close friends of mine, and I began to speak the word of the Lord to them. And I said, I see you going from prayer room to boardroom. 
It was very unthinkable. How do you go from prayer room to boardroom? I thought you will know so and so before you can get to a boardroom. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a season of promise. This is a season where promises will no longer be delayed as is coming, is happening. It's, the power of God was so much upon me that day that it almost seemed like the meeting was about the two of them. I had to shut down the other things I had to say because I did not want jealousy to come in. So I shut it down and I held it. Just this week, both of them called me and said something is happening here and we cannot understand it right from their prayer group, right from their prayer room, they entered into some consultation with people and the consultation snowballed into setting up a company and this company was um, owned by one of the billionaires in the country, a Christian. And they thought that all they were doing was just uh, uh, exercise. You know, when you just do academic exercise and it was so heated as the day goes by, as the month, as the week went by, it became so heated, not knowing that this billionaire was very, very concerned and very, very particular about the two of them. And as they finished the consultation, he said to them, I am giving the two of you 10% of this company. This company is a company that was already set up, not with their sweat. The man funded everything and he said he's setting up this particular company and he's giving them 10% of that company and they should be on the board. And they quickly came. They said, no, 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 no. This is bigger than they think. This is not a company that will be looking for clients. It already has, it has wings to fly. We couldn't just believe that this is what the Lord was saying. We didn't need to go out to look for this. We didn't need to solicit for it right from our prayer meeting. This is what only Jesus can do. And I began to say to them, this is only the beginning. I hear in my ears that the season is coming upon you. It will be swift, it will be very rapid. And as the season come, there will be brothers. There will be brothers rising against you. People will rise against you. People will want to, will want to, will want to betray you. They will want to call for your head, but the Lord Almighty will rise. Rise on your matter. And just today, she, they sent me another voice chat because I've been busy, very, very busy in the last two, two weeks. And they sent me a chat that you must have time for us, man of God. This is very important because the words you said that day, just before you finished that word, it came to pass. So we've never entered into warfare like we have entered in the past few days. This is the season of prophecy. One of us from Port Harcourt sent to me the word of a living God and said, please help me. There is a Christian brother, a pastor, so wonderful and dear to me, but he's sick. They took him to the hospital and they said it's COVID. I said, woman, the Lord is saying to me, he did not have COVID. COVID is not what he's having. What he's having is exposure. In the spirit, everyone has a company. In the spirit, this man's company are not with him. He is a man that is all alone, doing the just cause of the kingdom. The woman began to say, yes, 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 it is true. It's like, you know, this man, I said, I am seen by the spirit of God. But I tell you today, do you want him to leave? She said, yes, I want him to leave. I said, uh -uh, let us wait very well. We will not just suddenly be praying in futility. Tolu was in that meeting. And I said, let us check in the spirit. I began to check in the spirit. And all of a sudden, I saw the veil of Elijah come upon me. And I spoke in the spirit. I said, I cut off that sickness. And she sent the words, weeks, days after, rather, that the man is healed and hearty, healed of all sickness.
This is the season. Look up and let your heart be filled with the comfort of God. This is the season where the remnant will be tried, where the remnant will be squeezed. Oh, this is the season where the devil will begin to request for our head. Oh, he requested for the head of the disciples. He came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, why not give us the head of these 12 disciples? <laughs> hey, the environment has changed right now. Jesus was looking at the disciples and he said to them, Peter, oh, Peter did not know. He did not know that many times the devil had come to knock. Hey, I am reading from Isaiah chapter 31. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses who trust in chariots because they are many. Do not trust in strength. Do not trust in logic. Do not trust in the certainty of your environment. Wealth will fail, and so will strength fail. Those that have will not have. Those that do not have will begin to have. I just can't help it. Someone sent a voice note to me this afternoon. That why is it that you are just like Micaiah? When Ahab was begging Micaiah, have I not begged you to say good things to me? In that voice note, as I was listening to it, I was laughing. But I knew that the woman that was sending it to me was actually talking and said, please, can you say nice things? In my spirit, I looked, I said, Oh, I wish. I don't even know whether what I'm saying is nice or not nice. Because it is the word himself that is showing himself to me. As he's revealing himself to me, I'm bringing the word to you people. It may be a time for you to begin to see the word that is being said to you as a compass to make you navigate this complexity and these complicated times. Do not lean on anyone, no matter how sure. There is nothing sure anymore. This is the season where even the word sure will be unsure. Take it from me. Do not lie upon strength. Do not trust in chariots. Do not trust in chariots because the chariots are many. Because this is the season where the devil is asking for the heads of the remnants. There is a price tag in hell. There is a price tag for every remnant in hell. The devil feels that he has a price tag on everybody. But lift up your eyes. For the saints have been prayed for. Jesus is ever alive to intercede according to the will of God for the saints of God. And by the way, I thank every one of you that honored the the Ghost General among Ghosts two weeks ago, Madam Elizabeth, thank you very much for the money you sent to her. Thank you very much for the prayers. I appreciate every great, wonderful things that you've done in the name of the Lord. Peter, Peter. The devil is asking for you. To look and you bring up that, 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 that verse of the scriptures for me. So that when I finish with Isaiah, I will add it together. Thank you. Isaiah says, do not trust in chariots because they are many. And in horsemen because they are very strong. But who do not look to the Holy One of Israel, nor seek the Lord. Yet he is also wise and will bring what? Disaster is not my word, is the word of the Lord. If you think you have seen disaster, you have not seen it. Lift up your eyes. Greater than disaster is coming, not to frighten you. Because even he who is helped and he who is helping will fall. Not my word, 
the word of the Lord and will not call back his words. Are you hearing that? Yet he also is wise and will bring disaster and will not call back his word, but will arise against the house of evildoers, against the help of those who walk iniquity. Are you hearing that? Two weeks ago, we we're talking about iniquity, those who walk iniquity and the real meaning of iniquity. Among my people are wicked people. Did the Bible not say that? Among my people, Tolu, please look for that scripture for me. Among my people are wicked people. So I am saying this season is not the season where the devil needs to send demon to you. No, the people of God will be rising against themselves. The people of God will be rising against themselves. Yes, I want you to look for that particular scripture that says, among my people are wicked men. Please. Verse 3, he said, now the Egyptians are men and are not God. Are you hearing that? And their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, listen to this, but he who helps will fall, and he who is helped will fall down. They will all perish together. Why? Because as the lion rolls, and as the long, young lion over his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is summoned against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor be disturbed by their noise. So the Lord of hosts will come down to fight for Mount Zion. Are you hearing? He will fight for you. He will fight for me. Like to fight for Mount Zion and for its heels. Like birds flying about, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Defending, he will also deliver it. Are you hearing? Passing over, he will also preserve it. Hallelujah. For in that day, every man shall throw away his idols of silver and his idol of gold. Are you seeing that? Money will fail, wealth will fail, which your own hands have made for yourselves. Then Assyria shall fall by a sword not of man, and a sword not of mankind shall devour him, and he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall become forced labor. He shall cross over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of his banner, says the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and whose fullness is in Jerusalem. Thank you, Tulu. Thank you very much. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 26, he said, For among my people are found wicked men. They lie in wait as one who sets snare. They set a trap, they catch men. Are you seeing that? This is the season where the catcher will be caught. This is the season where the hunter will be hunted. This is the season where the bush, where the bush meat will chase after the hunter. This is the season where the rat will hit the snake. I know you can't believe or comprehend what I'm saying right now, but just listen to it. Because you'll be saying to yourself, how will a rat eat a snake? Simon, Simon. Peter, listen. Satan has asked excessively that all of you be given up to him out of the power and keeping of God that he might sift all of you like grain. But I have prayed for you, especially for you, Peter, that your own faith may not fail. Oh, this is a good place to rejoice that Christ has prayed for you. Are you hearing me? Oh, I do not bring a message that does not have hope. I have seen many, many messages that people send to me. Messages of fear. People are just giving prophecy out of fear. I began to hear a lot of prophecy and I laughed inside of me. <laughs> this is the season where God himself will separate himself from, from, from his servant. To bring up that place in Ezekiel where we read last week, Ezekiel chapter 40, I think, where God will make some ministers inaccessible to him, but he will open access of those ministers to the people. They can only minister to the people, they cannot minister to him. This is the season. 
because people want to hear what they want to hear, all right? I noticed strongly that since the season of COVID, people have been strangely interested in prophecy. You know what is happening? God is now going to deceive those people. The words that will be coming will be words of fear. It will be words of fear. Listen to me. It's not of God. It might look like it is not of God. The one that God is coming in is the season of prophecy. Hear many things. Greater than COVID is coming. I just laughed. If you don't have anything to say, shut that your mouth. Let Jesus speak to his people. It's not your altar anymore. It's not your stage anymore. The stage is collapsing on your head. Oh, celebrity pastor, oh, celebrity prophet, oh, celebrity minister is collapsing on your head. The word of the Lord himself is coming out from common places, from common men, men that are not on Twitter, men that are not on, on social media, men that don't even have any anchor. Listen up. Time is up. I'm waiting for you. Is it Ezekiel chapter 40 or Ezekiel chapter 42? I can't remember that place we both read last week. Peter, Peter. Ezekiel chapter 44. Thank you very much. I start from verse 10. Notice that the people I want to read about, they are Levites. And the Levites who went far from me, so a Levite can go far from God. That is what you are saying. All those that are prophesying, all those that are saying things, they are very far from God. They are just echoing his echo. Hey, people, brace up. Brace up because God is coming to is coming in a way that Jeremiah said, do not, do, not, you are, you are, do not be a terror to me. You have deceived me. I am deceived. People will be hearing just hear the Lord like this and it will not be from God. God will say it to, to deceive, to deceive men, to deceive people because all of a sudden after the COVID, everybody now strangely interested in just say the Lord and not in the Lord himself. So the Lord is coming, is coming, is coming, is coming, is coming, is coming, and is hitting hard. Everyone that has taken him for granted, including the Levite that has gone so far from him. When Israel went astray, who strayed away after me, after their idols, they shall bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, as gatekeepers of the house and ministers of the house. They shall slay the burnt offering, be here, you know, and the sacrifice for the people. And they shall stand before them to minister to me, to them rather, to them. Because they minister to them before their idols and cause the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Therefore, I have raised my hand in an oath against them, saith the Lord, they, that they shall bear their iniquity. This is the scary part. They shall not come near me to minister to me as priests, nor come near any of my holy things, nor into the holy place, into the most holy place, but they shall bear their shame and their ab abomination which they have committed. Nevertheless, I will, keep, I will make them keep charge of the temple for all its work and for all that has to be done in it. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? This is the re season when the prophetic will be so many in the world and it will be breeding fear. It will be breeding fear. If you quote me anywhere, yes, please quote me anywhere. The prophetic will be empty in this season. Only the season of prophecy and everyone that is in heat will find a true God. The prophetic will be empty. People will be saying things and you'll be afraid. They'll be saying things, but there won't be solution in what they are saying. But hear the word of the living God today. I bring the season of prophecy upon you that you will not be left alone. God will speak in plain terms and you will understand. And you will be delivered from the season of dryness that is coming. The most dangerous thing in a generation is for God to turn his back on, 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 on his ministers. 
when God begins to turn his back upon his own ministers, upon his own Levites, he will give the Levite access to the people. He will give the, the, the minister access to people. The minister will have all the word from God. Shekaniah and the 450 prophets, they, they, they heard the word of God. Didn't they hear the word of God? They heard the word of God because that spirit that became a lying spirit came from God. Yes, go and read the Bible. The Bible said it. Stop reading your pastors. Stop reading. Men of God, read God for yourself. And all of a sudden, the spirit came before God. And when God was staying in heaven, who will go for us? A procession was opened in those days. And, and God said, who will go for us? And, and one spirit came before God and he said, here am I. And he said, how will you go? He said, I will go like a lion spirit. And the lion spirit distributed themselves in itself rather upon the 450 prophet. Jeconiah was banging the gong and he was saying, go, 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 Ahab, go, Ahab, Jehoshaphat, you will win the war. That is the season in which we are. The prophet will be talking, but God is just giving the prophet a lie. Just because the people have taken him for granted. Now COVID has happened. COVID has shot the churches. COVID has shot everybody. And all of a sudden, everybody's now interested in God. No, liar, liar. The season is upon you. Season is upon you. The prophetic will be empty. But the season of prophecy will be upon God's people. That common men will begin to hear those say the Lord. And it will be so accurate and they will be the light in the darkness around them. Words will be empty in domes. World will be empty. It will be completely empty upon the people. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord. Thank you to Lu and said, I will pass with him. Are you hearing? The Lord said to him, in what manner? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all the prophets. All the prophets. Are you hearing? Oh, he even said all his prophets. So this is the season where men will begin to find profit for themselves, where profit in themselves also will have people. People will have access to profit and profit will have access to people in this season. They will say all kinds of words that they want to hear and everybody will be shivering and be saying, oh, they've said, they said, they've, they said another corona is coming. They've said another corona is coming. Lift up your eyes, oh people, and do not be deceived. The season of prophecy is here. And the Lord said, you shall persuade him and you shall prevail. Are you hearing? So the Lord is giving the spirit of lies to the prophet of the world. And they will prevail. They will lie. Go out and do so. Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours. And the Lord has declared disaster against you. Not my words, the word of the Lord. But you know what? upon the remnant with the true heart, which I'm not, I don't have the time to talk about their heart, but I will talk about it next week by the grace of God if I'm given the opportunity by God. God came into this meeting when Nosa was singing and he took over everywhere, sealed my lips and took it over. And I'm grateful for what he's doing. This is what we'll begin to see in the season. As you open your mouth, he will shut it down and he himself will begin to talk. That is what it's about. God himself is taking over his center state. God himself is taking over his, pu his pupil. God himself is taking over you and I. Why? Because Jesus ever lived to make intercession for you according to the spirit of God. Because the spirit groans. He groans and he makes intercession with groanings that cannot be altered. So that the price tag on your head, so that the price tag on my head from hell will not happen. Hey, he said, Peter, Peter, the devil asks of you excessively. Are you hearing that? Excessively excessively, which means he's coming every day to knock, and he's knocking, and he's knocking. Oh, he's knocking because of you. He's knocking. Why not give me the head of Lola? Why not give me the head of Timothy? Why not give me the head of Paul? Why not give me the head of Tolu? What is happening? Why not give me, you know why if the devil is asking for their heads? The devil is asking for their heads because there is, a, there is a promise on their head. There is a covenant on their head. It is not in vain that the lady that was dancing when she was asked to make requests through the spirit of Jezebel in, 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 in her queen mother. The request was the head of John <laughs> because the devil always looked for the head of remnant. He said, Peter, Peter, upon you, I will build my church. That is the reason why the devil is asking for your head. That is the reason why the devil is asking for my head. But you know what? 
a season of mercy has opened upon us and we have entered into the dimension of prayer so that we will not fall. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith, your own faith may not fail. Oh, this is the good news, people. This is the good news. The good news is not greater disaster that is coming. The good news is not greater than COVID that is coming. The good news is Christ is praying for you. No matter what is coming, I don't care. Christ is praying for you that you will not fail. So many people listening to me today, your faith will not fail. Come on, your faith. It will not fail. Karuma saliate. Urima kaliba sonia. Your faith will not fail. And when you yourself have turned again, strengthen and establish your brethren. The season is coming upon everyone here today. That in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your faith will not fail. In the name of Jesus Christ, the faith himself, the faith himself, the faith himself will come down and carry you through, and carry you through, and carry you through, and carry you through, and carry you through in the name. Oh, I begin to see how heaven is releasing himself. How heaven is releasing himself. Yes, I'm saying heaven is releasing himself. Why? Where Christ is, is called heaven. Christ himself is releasing himself from heaven to come to you. On behalf of the whole angel, on behalf of all remnants, is coming to carry you through. So that the price tag in hell will not come upon your head. They will ask for you. They will knock for you. For those of you in high places in office, they will begin, this is when they will begin to co-opt against you. This is when they will begin to, this is the time you will see the highest machination. This is the time where you will see Christians, Christian brothers, Christian sisters being used as tool to bring you down. But when you see these things, begin to know that the season of prophecy is upon you because they will come. They will come against you, but they will not succeed. Come on now. They will come. They will come. Even the devil will find your own people to come against you. No, 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 no. They will come through your flesh and blood. They did it to Job. They came through his flesh and blood. The, the, the devil said to, to God, why not give me his flesh and his blood? You know what it meant, that meant? He, the, he, why, why not give me his wife? Why not give me the closest person to him? You see what? You still see that? But lift up your head. Because in this season, they will not catch you through anyone. They will not catch you through anyone. In the name of Jesus. This is the season where you see the, the, the people of God coming together in tag team. You remember when Jesus was talking that the time will come when, when people in synagogue will be casting you out of synagogue thinking they are doing God the service? This is the time, people. All of a sudden, you will be the only one that is not walking in the line of what they know. But lift up your eyes, for your faith will not fail. How do I know? The word of the Lord has said it. Christ is praying for you. Christ is praying for Bolandi. Christ is praying for Lushike. Christ is praying for Luki. Christ is praying for TL. Christ is praying for Lola. Christ is praying for Nosa. Christ is praying for Bukola. Christ is praying for everyone that is listening to me right now, wherever you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your faith will not fail. Your faith will not fail. If you would like to call to this message, it is the season of prophecy himself. All over the world, the spirit is moving right now. As the prophet has said, it will be. All over the world, there is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord. But as he's showing himself, he's showing himself to remnants. And the prophets of the pulpit, the prophet of the people by the people for the people will be barred from seeing God. And who are those that will see God? The sons of Zadok. Come on, man. Come on, man. Because they've kept the charge. When the children went astray, they will come to God. You will begin to find God. You will begin to see God. Come on now. Even when you don't find him, you begin to see him. He will rise up as a as a as a as a as a as a as a, as a, as a persona by your bed. You will he will wake you up in the middle of the night as a person, and he will say, "Let us pray together." You will begin to hear right from his mouth. He will begin to keep you. He will begin to preserve you. He will begin to keep your children. He will begin to keep the whole of your family. The peace of the Lord be upon you. The grace of the Lord be upon.
He has told me to stop because this season is heavy. I will not waste the word of the Lord. I will not make it empty either. Please, I'm begging you by the mercies of God. If you will not be prepared for God, don't come for this meeting. The Lord shut me down because of some people. Don't come for this meeting. If you have distraction, don't come for this meeting. Please and please, I'm begging you in the name of the Lord. This is the season of remnant. This is the season of the few. Let the few come together and say amen by the spirit of God. Not for us to just tag along and feel that, oh yeah, I'm just, I'm just dragging myself. No, this is not the season of dragging. If you know what is coming, you will stand upright. If you know what is coming, you would even, you would drag yourself out of that bed and you will pray because Christ has prayed for you. The mercy of God be upon you. The strength of God be upon you. Look up this evening for Christ is praying for you. You will not see you. You will not see anything. You will not see you. But that ditch will be covered with water by the mercies of God. It will keep your company in the midst of crowd. It will keep your company and preserve your soul in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everyone. The Lord has released me. The Lord has said I should shut my mouth and I will not say anything any further. There are many, many things to say. But he has said I should keep quiet. And he said I should pray for the sick. And I'm praying for the sick wherever you are. A dying mother, a weak sister, a, a, a very weak father. I declare in the name of Jesus, wherever you are, you are healed completely. In the name of Jesus, you are healed of COVID. You are healed of every strange sickness and ailment. In the name of Jesus Christ, difficulty in breathing. You are healed of it in the name of Jesus. Acute back pain, you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. That person, you cannot stand up from where you are. Begin to stand up in the name of Jesus. The things you cannot do before, begin to do them by the mercies and by the power of God. In the name of the Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus, someone's twins just came right now. In the name of Jesus, receive it. And these twins, the Bible, the Lord is saying to me that they do not belong to you. They belong to God. The both of them will be used by God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I see the remnants that are rising right now. They are rising by the miracle himself, not by miraculous. The culture of God is upon them. God bless you. God bless you. He has told me to shut my mouth. God bless you. I wish I could go on. The prophecy is coming out very strongly, but he said I should shut it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye.